Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Raz, and in this video, we will discuss about transfer taxes. So, if you're ready, let's start. So, as we have mentioned in our previous videos, there are different kinds of transfer. So, transfer could be gratuitous or onerous. When we say gratuitous, this is a transfer of goods or properties for free, meaning without consideration in the part of the receiver. Whereas when we say onerous, it means that a transfer of goods or properties with a consideration or price, such as in the case of sale or barter. So the main difference between onerous and gratuitous lies on whether there is a consideration that the receiver would have to give to the giver of the good or property. Meanwhile, gratuitous transfer has also two components or two types. This could be mortis causa or inter vivos. So these terms are Latin. Mortis causa refers to transfer would only happen or only happens upon death. But when you say inter vivos, inter meaning within or during, and vivos means life. So when you say a transfer inter vivos, it means the transfer happens during the lifetime of the donor. So hence, mortis causa is upon death, and then the inter vivos transfer is during the lifetime of the donor. So the transfer mortis causa is actually subject to estate tax under the Philippine tax system, while the transfer inter vivos is subject to donor's tax. And again, these two taxes, the estate and donor's taxes, are called transfer taxes. On the other hand, when they say onerous transfers, this could be classified into three. It could be subject to value-added tax, or other percentage taxes, or excise taxes. Later on in our succeeding videos, we will discuss these three items, but to give you an idea of what is EVAT or in what is in other percentage tax or OPT, EVAT and OPT are actually two business taxes imposed on the sale or gross sale or gross revenue of the taxpayer. If the taxpayer's annual gross sales or annual gross receipts plus other operating incomes exceed 3 million pesos, he would be subject to VAT. But otherwise, when the taxpayer's annual gross sales or receipts do not exceed 3 million pesos, then he could be subject to percentage taxes. And there are a lot of percentage taxes. It could be 3%, the default, or we have 5% or 4% and 10% and so on. So we'll discuss more of these in our future videos. Meanwhile, when you say excise taxes, these are taxes imposed on sinful and luxurious products such as motor vehicle or minerals. Okay, so there are also guidelines on when these taxes are applicable and not all products or all goods in the market are subject to excise taxes. Okay, so these three taxes are called business taxes. And in our videos, in the next following videos, we will discuss more about taxes involving gratuitous transfers. This means we will talk about transfer taxes. Transfer taxes are excise taxes. Apart from the excise tax that I have mentioned just a while ago, when you say excise tax in this particular context, excise tax refers to a privilege tax. It means that this tax is imposed on the right. Okay, a while ago I have said that excise taxes are taxes on sinful products. It's correct. But aside from that, excise taxes could also mean a tax on a right. It's a privilege tax. And these taxes are imposed for gratuitous transfer or passing of privately owned properties to another during the lifetime or upon death. So the tax, the transfer taxes, are imposed for the right to transfer the properties or goods of one person to another, either during his lifetime or upon his death. It is the transfer, the right to 
freely transfer the properties that is being taxed there, not the property itself, and certainly not the person himself. Again, as an excise tax, transfer tax is imposed on the right to transfer the property gratuitously without consideration. So we'll discuss first donor's tax. As to nature, donor's tax is an excise tax, which, is, which means that this is a privileged tax imposed on the right to transfer freely, gratuitously during one's lifetime. So if you have certain properties, certain goods, and you want to give these properties to another person for free without consideration, as the donor of that property, you could be paying a donor's tax. And it is not you, the person, who is being taxed there. It is your right to transfer that property to another during your lifetime. Because donor tax is essentially an excise tax. Okay? And another, donor tax is imposed on the right of the donor to donate and not on the donor himself, as what I have just said. As to purpose, the basic purpose of imposing donor tax is to prevent the escape of payment of estate tax through lifetime transfers or property that would have been transferred by will or through death of the donor. So actually, donor tax is a complementary tax which complements the imposition of the estate tax. As we know, estate tax imposed only once the donor dies or the estate tax takes effect only when there is a death right so any transfer um upon death will be subject to estate tax so if we are the taxpayer and we know that there is an estate tax in assuming assuming there is no donor's tax then therefore we can actually we could actually um transfer our properties during our lifetime therefore escaping the payment of estate tax so to complement the estate tax so that there will be no escape for us as taxpayers from the payment of the estate tax, the law or the government, the state, imposed donor tax. So this just avoid to avoid the escape of the taxpayers to pay the estate tax. Okay? So now the real question is that why there should be an estate tax, right? If donor tax is just a complementary tax of the estate tax, then why do we have, why do we need an estate tax? What are the reasons, the theories, justification, and why there should be an estate tax, right? As its nature, the object of estate tax is the right to transfer the economic benefits and enjoyment of property from a dissident person to, to the heir or to the to his successors so the real uh object of estate taxation is not the person who died neither his properties okay so the real object of estate taxation is the right to transfer the property from one person to another to the heirs upon his death okay and the state protects the right of the individual on his properties and supervises its transfer from one generation to the next. Therefore, it is right for the state to collect something from this individual dissident to compensate the service provided by the state to the properties of the dissident, of the individual dissident. So here are some justification of estate tax. The following principles and theories justify the imposition of the estate tax. Number one, we have the redistribution of wealth theory. We also have the benefit received theory, the privilege or state partnership theory, and of course, the ability to pay theory. So we will evaluate these theories individually. So we will know why there should be an estate tax. So the first one is the redistribution of wealth theory. Redistribution, okay, from the word itself. It means the inheritance received 
produced by the air contributes the unequal distribution of wealth and earnings because the air has not actually worked for it yeah right because on the part of the air he just received the property the inheritance without effort right so it would be unfair for anyone in the community to see someone just receiving something from someone for free so because of that unequal distribution of wealth the state thought of imposing estate tax so that it can collect something from that inheritance back to the state for social unequal distribution so the imposition of death taxes or estate taxes helps redistribute some of the economic benefit which should have been solely enjoyed by the heir so under the distribution of wealth theory there is an unequal distribution of wealth and imposing an estate tax would somehow redistribute some economic value of the inheritance to the government and to the people the other theory we have is the benefit received theory under this theory the government provides services for the transfer of the estate of the dissident either by law or by will so it is therefore fair that the government collects its equivalent compensation in protecting individual persons and properties or rights so under the benefit received theory the government protects the settlement of the estate and the estate itself so it is right for the government to collect something as a compensation for its protection provided to the individual in their properties the other theory that we have is that the privilege or state partnership theory under this theory it's said that the state is a passive and silent partner in the accumulation of wealth as it protects every individual within its territory so under this uh, privilege or state partnership theory as one accumulates his wealth from during his lifetime the state is a silent partner okay protecting this person while he's trying to accumulate wealth while he's working doing his thing doing everything to earn wealth you know the the, the state is there okay silently protecting this person so under this theory the state the government is a silent partner okay protecting this individual while he is trying to build his own wealth okay so hence it is it has the right the government has the right to collect the share its share which is properly due to it okay so that is one of the contention of the privilege or state partnership theory the last theory that we have is the ability to pay theory so under this theory every inheritance received by an heir is in the nature of unearned wealth of course when someone receives an inheritance it will add value to their equity to their you know wealth so there is an increase on their wealth so therefore the effect of inheritance increases the wealth of the heir thereby creating an ability to pay the tax and thus contributing to the governmental income so, so the main contention of the ability to pay theory is that when someone is capable or more able to pay the tax then he should be taxed so that is one of the theories of taxation and also applicable or applied in the essay taxation so uh, becoming able or being able to pay the tax would mean contributing something to the government okay so that is under the ability to pay theory so those are the four theories which justify the imposition of estate tax now let me ask you which do you think which of the four theories that I've mentioned is the most reasonable one I want to hear comments and I want to hear your thoughts so comment them down and I will read them okay anyway let's proceed to our next slide when should someone pay the tax because if someone dies and he will be paying tax how could that be right he's already dead who will pay the tax generally speaking all transfer taxes accrue 
at the time of transfer because they are transfer taxes. Hence, for donor sacks, it accrues upon completion of the gift. So, for donor sacks, it will only be accrued or applied when there is already a completed delivery of the gift. Okay? When you say completion of the gift, it means that the donor does not reserve or retain power over the gift. So, if the transfer is conditional, therefore the transfer would only happen when the condition is fulfilled, right? But when the gift, the transfer, is unconditional, then the transfer immediately takes effect. So therefore, donor sacks will only accrue from the time there is a completion of the gift. But for estate tax, the transfer happens immediately at a time of death. Okay, hence estate tax accrues as of the time of death of the deceased. So, unlike donor tax, which would accrue from the time of completion of the gift, the estate tax accrues only when the, the, the individual dies. Okay, so that means the date or time of death of the decedent is the reckoning point when the estate tax should accrue but the question is who would pay the tax and who will be who would be taxed there I ha as i have mentioned the object of estate taxation is not the individual person not the person owning the estate or inheritance it is his right to transfer the property and that right is only exercised upon his death so therefore, at the time of his death, the right to transfer is already affected and therefore the estate tax is also affected. So therefore, who will pay the tax? It is the estate, the properties, the inheritance, the remaining properties which is yet to be settled is the proper payor or tax payer of the estate tax not the decedent himself because of course he's already dead right so there must be someone assigned to settle this estate and to pay the corresponding estate tax so later on we in our next video we will discuss who is this person so let's have an illustration don Cinto made the following transfers during the year 2020 first to maria his eldest daughter a brand new car with a current market value of 800,000 pesos on account of her marriage to Pedro to be held three months from the date of transfer. So, yeah. And then next we have to Juan, his only son, a one hectare farmland with a current appraised value of 2 million pesos with a condition that Juan shall enjoy its use as long as he can but the title of which will only happen after the donor's burial. So, of course, Don Asinto in 2020 is still alive very much. And he gave two, or he made two transfers. Number one to Maria and the other one to Juan. So, let us try to analyze which of these two transfers is a donation inter vivos and a donation mortis causa. So the first transfer is an account of marriage, and the marriage to Pedro will only happen three months after the date of transfer. So meaning if today is the date when Donacinto is giving Maria the car, then three months from today will be the wedding day. So the real question is is there a condition on this part? Okay, is there a condition? Actually, there is no condition in the first transfer. It is just said that the brand new car was given to Maria on account of her marriage. Not a condition that Maria should marry Pedro, but on account of her marriage to Pedro, which will happen in three months' time. So therefore, there is no condition and the property is already given today despite the fact that the wedding date 
will only happen three months after today so therefore this transfer is actually a donation inter vivos made during the lifetime the other transfer however is somehow complicated you know because there is a condition that Juan shall enjoy the use of this farmland as long as he can he can use the farmland he can plant trees or whatever he want to but the title of that farmland the ownership you know the title represents the ownership the title of that land will only happen or will only accrue after the donor's burial so therefore Juan must wait for his father Donacinto to die and after his burial then he could own the property to himself okay so in this case this transfer though there is already a transfer or the right to use the property but the title of the property will only transfer to one upon or at the after donacinto's burials therefore this is a donation mortis causa okay so that's it those are the transfer taxes donation de vivos and donation mortis causa Thank you so much for watching. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe, click the bell so you'll be notified whenever I will upload new videos. Okay, bye!